So this is one of my latest uh, projects here. I'm trying to figure out how to make this little uh, OLED display work. Uh, it's really confusing because the different chipsets and different commands and things for the different, uh, well, they look the same, but they're, they, it takes different software to make them run. But it's really nice little crisp display. It doesn't really flicker like that in real life. It's the camera that makes it do that. But yeah, it's pretty cool. It actually got it functioning and talking to the little uh, Adreno controller here, so making progress. So as I continue with my uh, next project here, we have a little um, DC motor driver circuit running a little DC gear motor connected to a 12 volt power supply and it's controlled by two wires here so when I um, give it a direction and a uh, enable command motor takes off and runs it's real low amperage just like 0 0.1 something or 100 milliamps a little over 100 milliamps it's a pretty tricky little motor and then to reverse direction I pull the direction pin low Hit the enable again, and we go the opposite direction. Works pretty slick. So I have my uh, circuit boards and components uh, figured out for my little project here. There's the Arduino controller with a couple little motor controllers, and those blue devices there are the uh, Z-Wave controllers that communicate to the home automation. It's a little interface board with some optocouplers for the sensors and the uh, display that will actually show the status and what have you. And it's all going to fit in this uh, little electrical box that I'm 3D printing here. It's got uh, the holes already made in the top there to hold the cover on and uh, the cord grommets there on the bottom. And then the cover that's going to be on it has a cutout for the little display. Holes already drilled and everything in it. And the 3D printer here is busy printing the box got another seven hours to go I'm running it pretty slow because I want the box to have a nice finish it's just cruising right along okay this is my uh, finished uh, print for the enclosure for my project uh, this is the as it says the curtain shade control by Ron Co. Uh, we've got the cover here got the holes already drilled or well not drilled they were 3d printed by the printer a uh, little opening there for the display a little cutaway there so the display fits pretty flush to the face and then the enclosure itself came out nice got the holes already there for the cord grommets put some standoffs in there already for the circuit board to cut away for the usb port for programming adreno and the holes already in here for uh tapping the threads to uh, hold the cover on that came out nice So here I have my uh, little motor that I'm going to be using for uh, opening and closing the curtains in my home automation project I've been working on. The little right angle gear motor. And it has the uh, mounting screws on the back. And in order to uh, mount this, I designed a uh, little mount here in uh, a 3D uh, CAD drawing program. And take a look at it here. It's got the holes in it for the um, motor to mount. It's got slots on the side for uh, adjusting the belt tension on it. And got those all dimensions figured out, thickness and what have you. And I import that into my um, uh, splicing, slicing software. And uh, then we load it to the 3D printer and print it out. And once the printer is done, we end up with uh, this piece here. It looks pretty much like... Uh, what I intended it to in the drawing. Got the holes for the motor and everything. So here I have everything set up for uh, testing, debugging. Um, got the little control box here that has uh, a little um, controller that's got the blinking light there in the lower uh, right hand corner. Uh, the two motor drivers there in the middle and power supply step. Uh, the two Z-Wave modules there, the blue things. And uh, a couple of little interface boards for the sensors and the uh, signals from the Z-Wave controllers. And we've got the two motors uh, that will run the curtain, one will run the shade. And then the uh, position feedback sensors, uh, curtain open and close and shade open and close. 
and everything seems to be checking out. We got this display here that uh, the display doesn't really do that. The video just makes it look to be uh, struggling like that. Anyway, um, everything's looking good, and the operation uh, works by voice command. Uh, Alexa, open table shade. Okay. You can see the motor running there in the background here. And uh, we got have a it's a runtime fault. Um, that's because uh, it ran too long. I have a timer set real short. That was one of the problems that I had with the original control was is uh, things would go wrong. The shade curtain or the shade would hang up on something, and the motor would just sit there and run forever. So now there's some logic that uh, will cut it out if it doesn't uh, reach its position within a certain amount of time. And so it just make the sensor to reset it. And then uh, Alexa, close table shade. Okay. And that's an overload condition that I just created there. If something hangs up or doesn't allow it to uh, get into place, causes too much resistance in the motor drive, it'll fault. Alexa, open table curtain. Okay. Likewise, it makes an overload on that one if something goes wrong. So I'd definitely say uh, 3D printing has um, improved the quality of uh, parts that I manufacture. This is uh, one of my uh, belt idlers that I made. Uh, notice the metal and a bit of a hammer and a vise and that sort of thing. And here's the 3D printed version. A little bit more elegant. I love it. Alexa, table curtain open. Okay. Alexa, table shade open. Okay. And as the shade's going up, uh, if I look on the uh, display here, I think this might be readable. Um, it's actually showing the motor amps and uh, counting the seconds it takes to open. So if it exceeds the motor amps for some reason, like there's a little bit of resistance, it goes into the overload and the curtain does the same thing. Alexa, table, curtain, close. Pull on the belt there a little bit, makes a little resistance, and it goes into the overload. And once an overload occurs, uh, there's a little reset button here. But it resets it and uh, goes to the home position, which is closed. And so both of them run to the closed position. And we're good to go. Everything's reset. And does the same thing on the timeout. If it takes too long to get into the position that it's uh, open or closed, it'll time out on the runtime, and it'll stop. This is the curtain motor and the bracket that holds it to the wall. You can see the uh, spackle on the wall there. That's where my uh, previous bracket got torn off the wall when uh, the curtain got hung up on something and the motor just kept pulling and had enough power to take the anchors right out of the wall. And then here we have the uh, closed sensor and the idler has to be in the middle there to keep the belt uh, in line. So it uh, brings it, the sensor um, can pick up the little carrier piece. That's this little metal piece right here that the sensor picks up for the open and close position. And then the bracket on the end, see down there at the other end, is the idler end of the thing. And then for the, and that's the motor for the uh, shade up and down. Uh, there's a little a wheel that has some rubber on it that uh, just pulls on the stock uh, little pull cord that's on the shade. And you see the LED on the position sensor there. That's actually a homemade position sensor. I 3D printed that. And, Put a little circuit inside there to uh, sense the magnet. Um, there's the top sensor. And I just put a little magnet on the uh, shade so the Hall, sen Hall effect sensor picks up the magnetism and activates the uh, output to the little Arduino controller so it knows what position it's in. This is my version 2 curtain control. Um, we have the uh, board here with the Arduino controller and the Z-Wave interface and display. 
and for testing purposes I'm using these sensors here. They have the open and close um, sensors. On this version of the control I implemented uh, some changes that I learned on the other one. Um, one of the big things was is that uh, since it runs off my solar panels the voltage varies quite a bit and change the speed that the curtain would open and close and so I put a uh, constant voltage power supply here. This is a buck boost um, power supply that holds it. Uh, I got it set for 15.6 uh, volts you see here on the display system voltage and holds that voltage all the time regardless of what the input is. You can see the input voltage is 12, a little over 12 and putting out 13.6 and it'll maintain that regardless whether it goes up to 14 or down to 11 or whatever. And then uh, the Arduino controller is uh, a newer version uh, made by a company called Seed. They call it a Seed, Seed Wino. Anyway, it's uh, got a nice USB uh, interface. It has a plug for the um, IC2 communication to the display, a reset button built on the board, and uh, had to use a little bit bigger motor driver because these are very large curtains, take quite, quite a bit more power to open and close. That board didn't have a uh, onboard current measurement, so I have another little board here that actually measures the current output to the motor, so if we see an overload that we can stop the curtain before something bad happens. And then the opto isolators here to uh, interface the 12 volts to the 5 volts for the Arduino controller. So I'm using a little bolt here to uh, simulate the curtain position to make her turn the sensor off or on until the position it's in. Alexa, window open. Okay. And so it starts running the curtains to the open position. Once it moves off the sensor, I can say, Alexa, window pause. Okay. And it'll stop the curtain in whatever position it happens to be in. And then I can have it resume, say, window open. Alexa, window open. Okay. And when it gets to the open position, it'll stop. Alexa, window close. Okay. And it runs to the closed position. And if it's already closed, say, Alexa, window close. Okay. The curtain won't move because it's already on the closed sensor. Likewise, same thing for the open sensor. On power up, it goes to find home, which is the closed position. And it says curtain is homing. And once it gets to the closed position, the curtain is closed that's made the sensor. Alexa, window open. Okay. That's running to the opening position. Comes off the sensor, says it's opening. Alexa, window pause. Okay. And stops in whatever position it happens to be in when you make the pause command. And you can continue in either direction from there. Alexa, window open. Okay. We get to the open position. Indicate that we're open. Alexa, window close. Okay. Closing. Once it's a closed position, we're closed. Alexa, window open. Okay. And if for whatever reason it doesn't get to uh, the sensor position, you see the runtime counting up there, it's set for 20 seconds now. So if something hangs the curtain up or is interfering with the closing or opening, it times out and we get a runtime fault. This is actually kind of difficult to do because the motor is pretty strong. Alexa, window open. Okay. And you can see it says that there's a curtain motor overload. Measures the overload current and stops if something hangs the curtain up again for whatever reason. I won't let it close. It will stop it on overload fault. This is my fully functional version of the curtain control. As you can see, these are quite large curtains. Um, a window off the deck off my bedroom. Uh, they go all the way to the floor. They're blackout curtains, so they're actually real heavy. And you can see in one corner here, there's the uh, open position sensor and the motor that actually runs it in the center. We've got the uh, closed position sensor and a little idler that has to hold the belt straight so the um, sensor can pick up the uh, little link in the belt. And then on this end we have the uh, idler. And then we have the control here. 
which I haven't mounted on the wall yet, but I made a 3D printed enclosure uh, for a cover with the display in it. Alexa, window close. Okay. Windows closing. I had to call this one window because the one downstairs is called curtain. And obviously can't have two devices with the same name, so this one became the window. And curtains closed. Alexa, window open. Okay. Alexa, window pause. Okay. You can stop it anywhere in between, and then once it's stopped, you can say window. Alexa, window open. Okay. Alexa, window pause. Okay. Alexa, window close. Okay. And again, the display shows what's going on here. And uh, this one's drawing almost a quarter of an amp uh, when it opens and closes, so it takes quite a bit more power to operate it. But it works great. Apparently I made my LEDs a little uh, <clears throat> excessively bright. Um, you will think about that next time so that they don't uh, shine like little floodlights through the case. But yeah, that's the final uh, control mounted on the wall. I have the USB-C connector uh, plugged into it right now just for any adjustments I may need to make.